Hi, uh, welcome to this next video on representing text uh, as vectors. So here we'll see the TF-IDF representation of a text document, which I guess is a bit more advanced version of the bag of words representation. So we motivated the bag of word representation by wanting to do machine learning on text. Uh, for instance, creating a spam filler where we take these text strings as input and somehow want to classify them into spam and non-spam. So the basic idea is that we'd still like to use all these machine learning algorithms that we've seen in pre previous videos, but they all take feature vectors as input. So the goal here with this bag of words representation that we just saw in the previous video was to represent text as vectors. And with the bag of words, the basic idea was that we started by assuming that all the words in the text come from the English dictionary. And then we create this vector that has a count for every word in the dictionary on the entry, a coordinate for every word in the dictionary. And then you just count how many times does this word occur in my text? For instance, with this text above, Viagra occurs twice, potency occurs once, cow occurs zero times, and so forth. So every coordinate corresponds to a word in the dictionary. All right. So we're just storing the number of times it occurs. Now, um, one of the observations we'll make here is that if, if you take such a text and represent it this way, you just take a text document, give, turn it into a vector by storing counts. Then there's some common words uh, like the, a, or, and, and so forth, right? They occur many times in most of the documents, right? And which means that they will have large weights in these representations. And basically, they are typically irrelevant for the classification, you know, to say what the document is about. These words are really irrelevant, but they have really large weights in these feature vectors. And also, if you think about it, if you have two feature vectors representing different documents, maybe they're about completely different things. Uh, but in these coordinates, correspond to these common words, they, all of them have large coordinates, which means that, you know, if you take inner products, for instance, between these vectors, then they'll get large inner products. And maybe this can be an issue for some of the learning algorithms that we've seen, uh, that these coordinates are kind of noise that we don't want to actually uh, put any emphasis on. All right, so, so they may, you know, if you have large weights, typically many of the learning algorithms we've seen are sensitive to scaling and, you know, maybe they'll, the algorithms will put more emphasis on these words that are actually not really relevant. And also an issue is that, um, the inner products if between these representations, like I just said, it's kind of noised by these words that align these common words and, and contribute to large inner products. So, so this is an issue. And uh, what we'll see here is an alternative way uh, to uh, an alternative to bag of words. So will try to, to deal with this. And so this technique is called uh, TF IDF. And I'll try to explain both the TF part of the word and the IDF part of the word. So the IDF stands for inverse document frequency. And the basic point here is that there are some words that occur almost all the time, like the, a, or, and, and, like we just saw, right? And then there's some words that occur in few documents, like the ones that I saw from these spam emails, Viagra, investment, charity. Maybe they only occur in these spam documents. I mean, that's a, maybe, hopefully a small fraction of your training data. So, you know, so some words are there almost all the time, some of them rarely. And if you as a programmer, or, uh, you don't want to actually sit down and hand code rules for which words to include or not, this inverse document frequency is a way of handling these words. So what does it do, right? The intuition is that probably the rare words, the ones that do not occur in very many uh, strings or documents, they somehow have more meaning about what the document is about than the common words that are there in almost all the documents. So the idea now is to say, well, we're going to take this idea of bag of words representations, but somehow we're going to weigh the terms of the words by how often they occur, how frequently they occur in the documents. So what we should do is we should think of it as if we have a collection of documents, uh, D1 to Dn. So think of this as all the training documents that you've gathered, right? So have a lot of strings, some of them, for instance, in the email example, like some of them, each of these documents is, a, is an email. And some of them are spam, some are not spam. Okay, so you have these documents, and then look at a term which would be a word. It could also be a two gram or a three gram that we saw in the previous uh, video. But look at a term being a word. Then we define the document frequency of this uh, word, a term, as the fraction of all the documents which contain this word. Right, so, so basically it's a, it's a fraction here, the n documents in total, and we just count how many of the documents have T, the term T, the word T occurring in that document. That's the document frequency. Then the inverse document frequency 
is you take one over this document frequency and then you take the log of it, the natural log. So the inverse document frequency then, if you write it out all out, is the log of well, the number of documents in total divided by how many of them that contain this term T. And so it's a function of T and it gives a weighing in some sense or a parameter that uh, describes the log of the number of documents over how many of them contain the word T. That's the inverse document frequency. And maybe just to give an example of it, let's say I have these three emails that I received, right? Document one, document two, and document three. Then you can try and look at what is the inverse document frequency of a couple of different words uh, here. So for instance, the word minister, right? So there are three documents in total in this training data set. And how many of them contain the word minister? Well, it's only the first one, right? So there's only one here. So the inverse document frequency is the log of three, which is about 1.1. Like the inverse document frequency of is, so how many of the words contain is? So there's an is in the first document, there's an is in the second document, but not in the third document. So, you know, it's uh, two of them, two of the documents out of the three contain it. So the inverse document frequency in this case is log of three halves, which is about 0 0.4. And finally, the word A is in all of them. The A occurs in the first one, occurs in the second one, occurs in the third one. So here, the inverse document frequency is the log of three divided by three, the log of one, which is just zero. Right, so this is different inverse document frequencies for different terms that occur in these documents. So the observations are that you know if I have a, a word or a term that occur in every single document, then this is log of n divided by n log of one, which is zero. So you put an uh, inverse document frequency of zero on it. And the words that occur, so this is the smallest possible uh, inverse document frequency is zero. The largest one you can have is if I have a word that occurs in just one of the documents, right? Then uh, this is log of n divided by one, which is just log of n. Right? So these are the largest possible uh, inverse document frequencies we can have. So they basically put an emphasis on rare words in some sense, right? The inverse document frequency is large if things occur very rarely and as small if they occur uh, many times in most of the documents which kind of makes sense uh, if you wanted to weigh things based on how, how rare they are. Right? So this, is, this seems like a natural uh, parameter. Now let me get to the second part of TF IDF. So what is TF? TF stands for the term frequency. So if I look at a document D and I look at a term T, so then it's just a you know, word T, it just gives the number of occurrences of this term. So basically we write it F sub T D. It's just a number of occurrences of the word T in the document D. And now if you remember the bag of words representation from the previous video, uh, the bag of words representation of a document is just a feature vector. It has an entry for every term that occurs in the dictionary. And that entry just stores this uh, F sub T comma D, right? The number of occurrences of T in D. So that's the term frequency. So basically the observation here is that uh, there are some issues with this. So if you just store the number of occurrences this, uh, of T and D, then if I have a really long text, right? So if I have a long text, then it's gonna have, it's gonna have many words. So this was gonna give in some sense, heavy vectors, right? Vectors that have a really large sum of weights, right? So if I, and if I have a short document, then, then I'll have light, like a light vector in some sense, right? That the norm of this vector is small. And, and so one issue with this is that, well, the topic of a document, right? If I, what is a document about? It's not always related to how long the document is. So, so maybe it would be nice somehow to normalize it so that all text documents, the, the corresponding vector have about the same um, weight in some sense. So the idea with term frequency, uh, TF, is to normalize these frequencies, right? So here are basically the frequencies of T and D and the num is just a number of occurrences. So if I uh, wanted to kind of normalize these, then I introduce the term frequency, TF. The TF of the term T and D is basically this number of occurrences of T and D divided by the length of D. So it's the, basically the fraction of words in the document D that are equal to the term T. Right. So now, basically, every representation, if I take my bag of words and replace every term by the term frequency, then in some sense, right, the sum of all the coordinates is just going to be one. 
Right? So this is a way of kind of normalizing these frequencies that occur in a document. So that's the TF, the term frequency of a term T in the document D is just a fraction of all the words in D that are equal to the term T. Right. So, so this one here, right? If I have this text here and I look at the term frequency of the in D, then I count how many times does it occur? It occurs once, it occurs twice, right? So it occurs two times, and the total length of this document is 13. So, so here the term frequency for the in the document D is two out of 13. Okay. I can also look at the word under. Under occurs only once here. So here this term frequency is one out of 13. Okay, with the bag of words representation, right, the would have a count of two and under would have a count of one. But here, if we kind of using the term frequencies, one can imagine dividing all these uh, entries in the bag of words representation by the length of the document to make these vectors comparable across different documents or different document lengths in particular. So now finally, this leads us to the TF IDF representation. So the bag of words representation, uh, every entry in the vector for a document is just the the number of occurrences of that term in the document. In the TF IDF representation, for every uh, term T you in, in this vector, you have still have a coordinate for every ter term in the dictionary. But if you look at a term T and you're representing the document D, then in the TF IDF representation, you take the TF, the term frequency, and you multiply it with the inverse document frequency. The term frequency, again, was the fraction of all the words in the document that are equal to T. We take this fractions ratio, which would be, I guess, the bag of words representation, but scaled by a length of the document. And now you multiply it with this inverse document frequency that puts high weights on rare words. So basically, if I have a word that occurs many times in a document, then it's going to have a large weight here. But also uh, the words that, are, that rarely occur in documents, the ones that occur in a small fraction of the documents overall, uh, they'll be given higher weights than the words that occur in almost every document. Right? So uh, if you think about it in practice, well, which one should I use? Should I use bag of words or should I use TF IDF? And really there's no guarantee that one is going to be better than the other. <clears throat> but TF IDF is sometimes better, but it's, it's not promised. So it's something where one can at least consider and one can try both representations of a, of a document. Right? So you, in particular, you could try both and use a validation data set uh, to see which representation is best, and then you can go with that one. And maybe let me just mention one last uh, alternative here is that sometimes in some applications of TF-IDF, uh, the term frequency, right, which is here, right, the fraction of the words in the document that are equal to a concrete word, uh, sometimes you just use this fraction, but other times uh, people have used this log of the actual number of occurrences plus one, this is not really normalized in the same way as the one above, but I guess the important point is that if, if some document occurs very, very many, uh, some frequency, uh, some term occurs very many times having a large frequency, then uh, up here, right, it will basically make up almost all of the, the mass in some sense, right? Let's say like a word is very common, it'll wait. it will be very important here compared to other words. Down here, you kind of take apply a log, so, you know, uh, having more and more and more occurrences, of a, of a word doesn't help that much in how big a, a coordinate you'll, you'll get. So this is sometimes used instead of it uh, with it in the TF-IDF representation, you replace the first term here by this log of one plus the number of occurrences. And I guess one important thing is that if this number of occurrences is zero, then you get zero up here, which is what you'd like, right? You still like the, the vectors should still be sparse if you have, uh, it should only have a number of non-zeros proportional to the number of, uh, words or terms or uh, the length of the document, right? So, so basically here we have kind of like a logarithmic scaling on the number of occurrences, right? So, so this is another alternative that you can sometimes use.